BMI has gotten a lot of grief recently, um, as you can tell from this headline, calling BS on BMI. How can we tell how fat we are? Uh, why does it matter? Um, it, isn't body weight uh, body weight? Isn't that what creates the load on the heart? The answer is no. Uh, body fat percentage is very important. Fat cells um, have a significant impact on hormonal balance as well as uh, inflammation, cardiovascular inflammation. So there's uh, a lot to be learned from um, body fat percentage. It's an important number. Now, <clears throat> I used to have, or I still have a patient who's been very frustrated with BMI. Um, <clears throat> He, this is not him, I'm protecting his personal health information, but I'm just giving you this image to uh, give you the context. Although he's, he's in his mid-60s right now, in his uh, college days, he was a, uh, an athlete. He was a um, gymnast. And again, this is just to remind you and give you a mental picture of what kind of body fat, um, or at least subcutaneous body fat, um, these folks have. There's some statement, uh, some idea that you can't judge visceral fat, and maybe even this gentleman might have some. There's variation. We'll talk about that later. Um, but I've I've told my patient and and friend, look, you've got what's called the Schwarzenegger effect. That's a well known uh, variation of the BMI. And if you look at Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, this says it all. This is his BM, uh, BMI, 30.2. Um, beyond overweight, level one obesity. Uh, again, for Arnold Schwarzenegger during the peak of his career. Well, as you can tell, again, he was actually 5% uh, or and less during most of the peak of his career in terms of body fat as uh, judged by um, better things than BMI. So <clears throat> again, BMI can be very frustrating. Uh, body mass index, especially if you're a bodybuilder. In reality, BMI tends to overall uh, overestimate the body fat that men have. Uh, men, even if they're not bodybuilders, tend to have more muscle than women. And the, and the BMI tends to underestimate the body fat that, that women have. That has to do with testosterone, um, breast uh, tissue, and things like that. So, <clears throat> what, what, what are we to do? Well, it turns out, uh, just over the past month in, um, in a journal called Nature, uh, there was a publication of an article which says we've got an equation that beats BMI at estimating body fat mass. Um, who did it? How good is it? Uh, where was the research done? Um, why is, you know, what's the science behind saying that body fat is all that bad? I'm going to cover some of those questions in this video, but first a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. -E -E Started off as an ER doc. Um, patients coming into the ER are very dis can be very disappointing in terms of the amount of death, disease, and disability that should have been prevented. So I got very focused on prevention. I went to uh, Johns Hopkins to learn it, uh, loved it. Ended up running the program there and uh, training docs um, for the rest of my time there. I, when I finished, I went out into the rest of the world and uh, have been working with primary care docs, uh, helping them understand uh, how to do prevention and the science behind prevention. Now, um, <clears throat> I've seen my share of patients as well. And again, the key thing is understanding um, the science behind prevention. If you do, it's a lot easier to uh, have the discipline that you need to go on the correct diet for you, to do fasting if, you're, if you need to do it, to do the right kind of exercise. 
uh, knowledge is power. So this is a, a legacy thing, this channel helping folks uh, understand the, uh, the science of prevention. I, um, I know a good bit about it. I've got, a, uh, got the background that I discussed with you, but things are changing every month, just like the new BMI studies and the replacement for the BMI. So <clears throat> if you look back at uh, the, the uh, New York Times, the New York Times uh, covered this as well. Uh, there you go. Well, let me see if I can move that down just a little bit. Yep, right here, as you see, it's the New York Times. And uh, the point behind this picture is, should be very, very obvious. A number that may not add up. And here's the, uh, um, again, Picture's worth a thousand words. This, uh, hopefully I'll save us some time here. This is obviously someone who's got a lot more body fat. And this is someone who's, um, although it's not an apple shape, which we tend to talk about. This is a pear shape. The apple shape is more of a belly uh, protrusion type thing. This is more the Schwarzenegger effect. And they go into a lot of detail in that uh, New York Times article in 2014 about BMI. Actually, even to point out that it was not uh, developed quite so much for medical reasons. It was developed in the 1830s by a statistician from Belgium who was studying uh, human growth. Had it been developed in the medical area, I'm not sure that it would have been much better. <clears throat> now, what, here's one of the major uh, studies pointing out the problems with... Uh, looking at uh, obesity and um, at least by the BMI. This is in, in JAMA, uh, one of the JAMA journals, Association of All-Cause Mortality uh, with Overweight and Obesity Using Standard Body Mass Index Categories. So this was uh, in January 2nd of 2013. And I'll go over to one of the key components of the study. This is the study in a PDF uh, format. And let me just uh, read some of the results. Basically, they, uh, they looked at um, uh, thousands of individuals. They um, did not find an increase in mortality for people um, from 25 to 30, which is overweight. And if you measured... Oh, um, be, uh, obesity level one. So if you look in this area under results, grade one obesity and um, grades two and grades three were calculated relative to normal weight. Um, <clears throat> the summary HRs were 0.94 for overweight. In other words, a little bit lower risk for mortality. Uh, 1.18 uh, for obesity of all three combined. Uh, 30 to 35, 35 to 40, and 40 and above. Those were increased to 1.18. For grade one obesity um, done alone, it was not increased either. So these findings persisted when lim uh, limited to studies with measured weight and height that were considered to be adequately adjusted. Now, <clears throat> let me um, go down to their conclusions and relevance. Relative to the normal weight, both obesity, all grades, and grades two and three obesity were associated with significant higher all-cause mortality. Well, that was some um, justification and support for the BMI. But again, grade one obesity overall was not associated with higher mortality, and overweight was associated with significantly lower all-cause mortality. So the question is, do we have our standards wrong? Or is our number, our statistic, is the BMI wrong? Um, that's the big question, and again, a lot of debate in that area. Let's go and look at some images. This is what a BMI would look like for men. Um, less than 18, and again, there's uh, significant science out there indicating that less than 18.5 is dangerous um, 
has increased mortality, and you can understand why. People that have cancers, uh, people that have uh, have had a stroke and can't feed themselves properly, um, people with um, uh, paralysis of lower limbs and wasting, any type of wasting tend to fall in this category, therefore increasing mortality rates. Um, this is somebody at 30.0. And you've, we've all seen, America's now full of these kind of folks. Um, but again, you compare that to the Arnold Schwarzenegger type, who has a BMI of 31, but much lower body fat percentage. And it's really clear that BMI is not the same as body fat. You get the same thing over in the, um, with the women. So... <clears throat> Let's uh, move on, look at another image. Um, how do you measure body fat? Well, you just look up body fat chart, or, or I mean, uh, not body fat, BMI. How do you measure BMI? You just look it up on a chart. And as you can see here, I will do mine. I'm 5'10", so that's 70 inches. And... 160 pounds right now. So I'm in the green area with a BMI of about, I think, 23 and a half, something like that. I've been down to 150. I tend to bounce between 150 and 160. The BMI for 150 is 22.1. Um, so again, fairly simple numbers, but they really don't measure the fat uh, as well. They just look at body mass. Now, <clears throat> is there another way of looking at this? Yes, there is. It's called DEXA. But DEXA is very, very expensive. And the new numbers, the new, the new um, calculation was actually studied with NHANES and DEXA. So uh, one thing I didn't know was the, the NHANES study that's National Health and Nutrition Examination Surveys. Um, the NHANES studies actually include a subset of people that have had a complete um, DEXA scan. Now, what does DEXA show you? And what are the, um, well, let me just, we'll talk about NHANES and, and the, tech, the uh, technical aspects behind DEXA a little bit later. But let's just look at these images. So as you can tell, and you're probably already guessing, the um, darker color, the um, pinkish color in these images is muscle, and the yellow is body fat. So this uh, brings to uh, a significant picture to the um, statement that you sometimes hear when people are working on their body fat, and they say, there's a skinny person inside me trying to get out. Oh, yes, there is. Now, <clears throat> they try to draw some delineation between BMIs and uh, young and old and body fat percentages. We're not going to get into that for this, um, this video. Um, in fact, we are um, getting uh, long in the video time here. I'm going to have to uh, break off and tape the rest of this um, later, it'll be uh, BMI and uh, um, RFM, relative fat mass, um, part two. What's the CDC doing? Well, the CDC you still is all about, still about BMI. They haven't mentioned RFM yet. And why is that? Well, because, again, this was just a few weeks ago, it takes time to move a ship as big as the CDC, but I do believe they're going to start including RFM. Thank you again for your interest.